Hey guys, Richard Oldner here. Who wants to see a shootout between a supercharged 383 LS and a turbocharged 383 LS? Oh, I don't know, maybe everyone? Let's get going. In this video, we're gonna take a look at two different 383 LS stroker motors, one equipped with a Whipple supercharger, the other equipped with a single turbo. Oh no, here comes crazy. Oh great, you. here we go. Did I hear you say that those are two different motors? Yeah, they are two different motors, man. Why don't you mind your own business? They were almost identical. Oh, really? Almost identical. Yeah, that's a really good back-to-back -back test. Matt, why don't you mind your own business? Like I said, they're almost identical. Or were they at least run at the same boost level? Yeah, they run at the same boost level. It can't be identical, though. Two different blower sizes, two different blower curves. You know anything about boost? Yeah, I know about boost. I know about being a good test. Now, what do you know about being a good test? You don't even have boost on your truck. Man, why don't you leave me alone about my truck? My truck's all stock. It's awesome. Yeah, why don't you stop mouthing off till you get boost on your truck? Then you can come talk. Yeah, man. Wait, do you see about the comments? So we got two different motors. We've got two different blower and boost styles. We've got two different boost curves. Man, why don't you learn how to do a test? Man, why don't you mind your own business? Yeah, wait, did you see the comments, man? Yeah, wait, did you see me delete those comments? You better not be deleting those comments. I will knock you the heck out. We'll let those guys argue amongst themselves. Let's check out the results comparing a Whipple supercharger to a single turbo on our 383. To get things started in our comparison between a turbocharged 383 and a supercharged 383, we're going to look at our supercharged combination first. This is the 383 Stroker LS that we ran the Whipple supercharger on. So we ran this thing um, NA to begin with to establish a baseline before adding boost to it with either combination. And what we did was put together a healthy 383 because the more power you make NA, the more power you will be able to make at any given boost level. So we wanted to start out with a healthy NA motor before adding the Whipple supercharger. To do that, we built a 383 stroker with forged rods, forged pistons, and a forged crank using a standard iron block from a 5.3 liter. We bored it uh, to 3902 and used a four inch stroker crank with flat top pistons, so it had a decent amount of compression in it. We had a healthy hydraulic roller cam in it. It was a Comp 54 dash. 459-11 camshaft, so designed for the cathedral port heads, you know, it was a cathedral port camshaft. It was a 617-624 lift split, a 231-239 degree duration split, and a 113 degree load separation angle. But oh no, it wasn't a blower cam, but as we'll see, um, every cam is also a blower cam. So we ran this combination with a set of TrickFlow Gen X215 heads, which worked pretty well on that uh, larger bore on the LS1 size bore, the 3900 stuff. The 215 heads were Gen X heads, they were CNC ported, they flow very well, and they make good power and work well on this particular combination. When we ran this thing NA, we topped it with a fast LSXR intake manifold and 102 millimeter throttle body. We also installed, to get things started, a set of inch and three quarter headers with collector extensions on them, and all of this was run on uh, race gas. Uh, the the NA stuff here was run on 91 pump, but then when we added boost, we ran it on race gas. We dialed this thing in with the Holly HP management system. We had 83 pound injectors in this combination, um, and obviously we dialed in the air fuel and timing on this NA motor. It ran best at about 29 degrees of total timing. We had a curve built into this um, starting out uh, at 23 or 24 down low and, and, and near the torque peak. It just didn't, it didn't want 29 degrees of timing at the torque peak on this NA motor. And again, we ran it on 91 octane. After dialing everything in, this combination made 541 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 518 foot-pounds. And you can see it exceeded 500 foot-pounds from about 4,200 out to 5,500. So it made good torque. This was a good combination for a 383, but now let's take a look and see what happened when we added our Whipple supercharger. To start off, we added, we installed a 3.875 blower pulley on our Whipple. We had the same 102 millimeter throttle body on that and running a peak of 7.4 pounds of boost with this pulley out at 6,600 RPM. This combination made 712 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 621 
foot pounds, 622 foot pounds. I take that, take that back. 622. You don't want to get that extra foot pound in there because like it makes a difference. But as you can see in kind of typical, uh, positive displacement, uh, Whipple supercharged fashion, this thing added power basically everywhere. And it'll be interesting when we compare the boost curves of this Whipple supercharger to the turbo. And as, as we'll see, um, and most people think that a positive displacement blower has like immediate boost, which it does. And, and they think that the boost curve is fairly flat, but as we'll see, that's not the case with this combination. We have actually have a rising boost curve and we have a nice climbing power curve. This combination did very well, but let's see what happened when we, um, step things up and how we made a little bit more power. So the first thing we did was, uh, obviously change the boost. We put a smaller 3.625 blower pulley on there and we uh, up the boost to 778 horsepower and 672 foot pounds. And that raised the peak boost pressure to 9.2 pounds. Then I did, because we were getting close to 800 horsepower, I wanted to make 800 horsepower with the supercharged combination. What I did was we put on a set of inch and seven eighths headers to add some exhaust flow. And I added one degree of timing. And yes, I did those at the same time <laughs> and should have done them one at a time. But all I was looking to do was like top the 800 horsepower mark without having to change the blower pulley size. So we did, we made 802 horsepower with those changes and peak torque was up to 682 foot pounds. So now that we've exceeded 800 with our supercharged 383, let's take a look and see what happened when we ran our turbo 383. After taking a look at the power gains offered by the Whipple supercharger on the 383, now we can take a look at um, comparable power gains offered by a turbo on a 383. And this was actually a different motor. So here's where we're going to get all the awesome comments. Both of these motors made about the same peak power, almost identical. This one made 541 horsepower, 542 horsepower. Although torque was down slightly, it made 503 or 504 foot pounds compared to the other one that was up a little bit. What we can do is talk about why there's a difference between these two. But as I said, the power output was very comparable. Now, the two big differences that we have here, we have we have three, actually. We have a slightly different, uh, we have a change in static compression. This one was a bit lower, which I attribute to the, the difference in torque production, even though the peak power was the same. We also have a slight difference in the cylinder heads. We had a 215 Trick Flow Gen X. Uh, 215 head on the supercharged combination and this motor was running a set of 225 heads. In reality, I don't think the difference between those heads might even be measurable on these combinations because neither one of these motors were um, maxing out these cylinder heads. So uh, if I were to do a back-to-back -back test on this motor, I don't know that we would see anything going from a 215 to a 225, but I want to bring those up. Um, the other thing is the camshaft. The other cam had the 459 comp cam. This one had a crane cam. Had, had It was a 232, 240 deg degree duration split. So a little bit different, you know, uh, one or two degrees on the duration. It also had a 624, 624 lift split compared to the 617, 624. Again, almost nothing. And it had the same 113 degree lobe separation angle. So differences in cams. Again, next to nothing, and we're seeing that. I mean, these things made it almost identical peak power, but a little bit different torque. <laughs> now you guys can make comments about how they're not the same test motor, but I digress. If we take a look at the power output, again, 542 horsepower, peak torque was 504 foot-pounds of torque, and exceeded 500 foot-pounds from about 4,500 out to 5,400 RPM. A little bit different than the other one, but again, you know, we had some differences in the motor. The interesting thing is that um, we ran this combination with a single GT45 turbo from the guys at CX Racing. Let's take a look at that. With an air to water intercooler. And I don't know if I mentioned that with a blower, the blower also had an air to water intercooler. It was integrated under the blower on the Whipple supercharged deal. And this combination produced 811 horsepower. Uh, peak torque was also up over 800 foot pounds, 825 foot pounds of torque. And the interesting thing is we'll take a look at the differences in the boost curves on these combinations. We had run this um, 
this single turbo at, at a variety of different boost levels, but I wanted to pick one that was comparable to the power output of the Whipple supercharger. So this is what happened when we ran the single turbo on a 383 with, you know, heads, cam, and intake manifold, similar to the, the Whipple supercharger combination. So let's take a look. We see very comparable peak power numbers. We see different peak torque numbers. And I think that the answer to all of these questions is in the boost curve. Let's check that out. So before we get to our comparison, of the boosters, we need to take a look at a comparison between the power outputs. So this is our supercharged 383 with the Whipple supercharger. This was at 7.4 pounds. Here's what happened when we stepped up the boost curve. I mean, stepped up the pulley size. This was with the header extra timing and the smaller blower pulley. That was about 9.2 pounds. Here's what happened when we ran our, and this is in comparison to our turbo combination. You can see that the while the peak numbers were very similar, the actual power curves were dramatically different. Um, we can see that the turbocharged combination made it over 800 like the supercharged combination did, but did it for a much broader range um, and had quite a bit more torque. So we can take a look at the differences in the power curves and the differences now we can correlate that with our boost curves. Let's check it out. After taking a look at the comparison between the power curves, we saw that the turbo combination offered more than 100 extra foot-pounds of torque in the lower RPM ranges, and we're going to show you why right now. <laughs> And it's actually because we can see the difference will be, obviously, the boost curve will tell us the answer. So this is the boost curve offered by the Whipple Supercharger on the modified 383. As we can see, the boost curve is fairly flat at 5.5 pounds and rises uh, rapidly thereafter up to a peak of about 7.4 pounds at 6,600 RPM. Here's what happened after we changed the blower pulley we see that we now have a peak of 9.2 pounds and that we raise the curve up to around seven pounds for past 4,500 and then it started rising rapidly. So we have basically a rising boost curve um, after 4,500 RPM and our peak of 9.2. But here's what happened when we ran the turbo. We can see Peak boost pressure on the turbo was 9.4 PSI out at 6,500 RPM. But the important thing is that the turbo, because we had a uh, electronic wastegate controller on this particular combination, on this single turbo application, both of them had the same dyno water running through the intercooler and all that. So that uh, the charge temperatures were very comparable. But what we did have was a lot more boost offered by the turbo through most of the curve. And that's a function of that electronic controller and obviously the sizing of the turbo. This turbo was um, about maxed out at this kind of power level, but it did have um, enough to support that power level below that maximum RPM point. So we could run about 10 pounds on this combination all the way through. And while it would be nice, you know, the, the supercharger has a couple things going against it. First of all, it has parasitic losses associated with driving the blower. So even at the same boost level, it would actually make less power. The other thing is that it doesn't have the same boost curve as the turbo does because we have an electronic wastegate controller and because we sized our turbo to provide boost, a, a flat boost curve all the way across, it's just making more power because it has more boost, which is always the case. And we saw this, we made more power when we raised the boost on the supercharger. And basically what we did was raise the boost with the turbo and we made more power, so no big surprise. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what did we learn in our comparison between the supercharged 383 LS and the turbocharged 383 LS? Well, we learned the following things. First of all, a turbo makes more power than a blower does because there are parasitic losses associated with driving any supercharger, and we don't really have that with the turbo. The other thing that we learned, which is not nearly as surprising, is that having more boost makes more power. <laughs> and that's the way that it always is. So really, this wasn't a test between a supercharger and a turbocharger specifically, but it does show because we had two different motors and we have two different kinds of boost supplied. And we also had two different levels of boost because we cannot control the boost level and make them identical. There's no way to get that Whipple supercharger to produce 
a flat, consistent boost curve like we are able to do with the turbo. Now, maybe we could manipulate the turbo a little bit and I could put um, the right size wastegate and spring and actuation to try to duplicate the boost curve provided by the Whipple supercharger with the turbo and then we could kind of see. But to do that and really compare it, obviously we would want to do that on exactly the same motor. But I wanted to, you know, going back through all of my data, which is why I love having all this data, I can go back and go, hey, look, these things are nearly identical and they make for good comparisons showing the difference between boost from the supercharger and boost from the turbo because it's going to be different. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I will keep the data coming.